first uh, 2022 a meeting of the board of directors of the CDTA. Um, I guess it's our holiday show. So we'll start, though, with the uh, approval of the minutes of the last meeting, which was October 26th. Can I have a motion on the minutes? So moved. Thank you, Mike. Second. Second. Thank you. All approved. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Any opposed? We'll move on then to the service award recognition. It's hard. And Jamie. Okay. And finally, after all these years, God assisted for this. <laughs> <laughs> I probably could run it better. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but at least it'll be my good work. I thought it was doing pretty well with the DJ stuff. She's better at this than I am. Um, I don't think so. Well, anyway, first up is Derek Downs. All right. <laughs> Derek is celebrating the 20 year, his 20 year service award as an assistant service technician with us. So Derek is originally from Brooklyn and before coming to CDTA he was working at a local Hanover and riding CDTA buses to and from work. And actually we found out that LaRonda Donnelly, who is also receiving her service award, to, service award today, was really integral in getting Derek a job here at CDTA. So kind of a cool connection today with our service awards. Um, as I said, Derek's been with us for 20 years as an assistant service technician, and uh, essentially assistant service technicians clean our buses when they come off the road, and that includes a thorough deep clean of all the interior of our buses. So Derek says he's proud of the work that he does and the team that he does it with. They keep our vehicles looking the best they can on the inside every single day. Absolutely. And over the years, he says that new products, technology, and new protocols has created efficiencies in being able to clean more buses throughout the day and, and get clean buses back out on the road. He enjoys spending time with his coworkers, and he reminisces about holiday parties that would take place each year. He says it's been hard to get together with coworkers lately because of the pandemic, so hopefully we'll be able to do that a little bit more moving forward. In his spare time, Derek travels to Brooklyn to visit family. And 20 years is a pretty impressive okay. career, Derek. Yep. Thank you very much, and congratulations. We'll start here. I'm going to go that way. I'll have you shift over a little, Derek, so I can get the CDTA. There you go. He's one of the best cleaners here. There he is. with an automotive background. He said he wanted to be part-time as a cleaner here at CDTA for a third job, but he said when he saw the pay and benefits, it sounded like a better deal to come to CDTA full-time and create some balance in his life. So he started out as a cleaner, but didn't stay there for too long. Two weeks later, he became a mechanic, and that's a position that he held for about nine years. He then climbed to foreman for three years, and now he's been an intelligent transportation systems technician for the last eight years. So just in case you may be wondering what an ITS technician does, they essentially are responsible for a number of systems on our bus, but essentially the, the biggest part is keeping the fare boxes up and running, and they also maintain and repair our vault, so two very important systems on, on our buses and about our fare collection. So Tony's most memorable moment being part of CDTA, he says, is the sense of family and support that he experienced after his daughter passed away. He says his colleagues supported himself and his family and offered condolences at his daughter's services, and it's something that he won't forget. CDTA, Tony says, has provided him a sense of security and balance in his life that he really enjoys, and it gives him plenty of time to spend time with his kids. And he says when he's not with his family, you can find him riding motorcycles or tinkering on cars. And he tells us that he's currently looking for land or property because he'd like to build a garage because he needs some room for his expanding car collection. <laughs> so, Tony, thanks for sticking around for all these years, and congratulations. And last 
but certainly not least, LaRonda Donnelly, celebrating 35 years. Yeah. I've been staying up here a lot of times. <laughs> And today is actually a very special day for LaRonda because not only is she receiving her 35-year award today, but tomorrow will actually be her last day with CDTA. So a little bit about LaRonda and how she got to be here at CDTA for the last 35 years. She started her career in 1987 as a star operator. She spent four months there before transitioning to fixed route operations in Troy and then moved to Albany. So when LaRonda joined our team, she was just 25 years old, and she said getting up early and working long hours in the beginning was pretty challenging. She says it did get easier after a little bit of experience yeah. and time and the drivability of new buses. LaRonda currently drives the Route 114, which is our Madison Avenue and Washington Avenue route, and it operates between Crossgates Mall, U Albany, downtown Albany, and the Rensselaer Rail Station. And you may have read about this in the news, but just in case you didn't see it, LaRonda was our first female operator to be at the top of the ATU seniority list. She had received a proclamation from Mayor Sheehan, and I think a lot of your colleagues and folks in the community call you First Lady. <laughs> LaRonda attributes her longevity to her great friends at CDTA. She says it's like a big family here, and everyone is very supportive of one another. She also notes that the company benefits are a nice perk, too. <laughs> LaRonda says that her favorite customers are the young kids that she sees every day. She said that the kids are always excited to be on the bus, and when she gets the chance, she tries to sing Wheels on the Bus with them. <laughs> 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 but Lorena, thank you for 35 years of service, and we are no doubt a better company because you've been part of it. of the company um, represented, well it's not a tough one, it's a great one, right? but what's tough is the lady behind me is leaving. She was sort of um, handed to me by Dennis Fitzgerald. Dennis said, watch, watch, watch LaRonda because you know, she comes to work every day um, as a family but gets up at 4 o'clock in the morning and will be there for you anytime you need her. And, you know, he's given me a lot of great advice over the years, but that one was spot on, and, and we are going to miss him. Miss and I was his favorite. No. <laughs> <laughs> he emailed still, me this still morning. Today. He said that <laughs> was, was my favorite. But, but Tony Clanton, uh, you know, ITS stuff, I, I asked Jamie to do a quick explain on that. And that's in the last 20 years. It's just taken off. It wasn't here. We didn't need it 20 years. We didn't have that kind of technology. But Tony keeps it humming. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of guys in that shop now. How many, Tony? Uh, five right now. Five, six, you know, zero 20 years ago. That's really a big change. And, you know, double D over there. Um, <laughs> you know, when we say people should, should expect a clean and comfortable ride, that's the guy that's responsible for it. You know, and those kinds of things, sometimes we just take for granted while it happens. It doesn't just happen. You know, guys on Double D, man, they show up every day and, and they get it done. Uh, we appreciate it. No problem. Oh. Yeah. Thank you, Kyle. It's all yours. All right. Well, we'll move on to our business with the committee reports. Uh, the first one is the Board Operations Committee. I'll make that presentation. Committee met on December 7th. We reviewed the committee agendas and activities for today's meeting. Uh, the committee also reviewed the board and committee meeting schedule for 2023, which I think has been distributed to everyone now. Uh, the board retreat in November was discussed. It was very informative. We all got a lot out of it. The staff reviewed the facilities plan and updated the board 
on long-term projects. We spent a good time uh, talking about the uh, uh, facilities and the conclusion is that we do need to begin the process of building a new garage, most likely in the northwestern part of our service area, in the area of Schenectady County. Uh, more details will be coming up during the course of 2023. Lisa Morello joined us uh, with an advocacy update. We've kicked off the advocacy uh, season uh, with elected and appointed state uh, officials of state transit will remain at the forefront of the state operating assistance discussion. Uh, state operating assistance is the key of, uh, of our funding package for transit systems across New York State. At CDTA, we use the operating assistance to maximize the mobility choices that are available throughout the Capital District. Uh, the collective bargaining agreement was also discussed at our committee meeting. It expires uh, June of 2023. Staff is working on our strategy, and we will be talking about that important work uh, early in 2023 as well with the entire board. Uh, so that's my report. The next committee meeting is uh, Wednesday, January 11th, uh, 9.15 here at 110 Florida Lead Avenue. Any questions about that report? Is that meeting? If not, then we'll move on to uh, the Performance Monitoring Audit Committee. Dave Stackrow's pinch hitting for Denise Figueroa today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have a few resolutions to uh, work our way through. And I have a... Um, a nice condensed version of four pages of notes. So we'll get through it as quickly as we can, <laughs> spending the time we need to to uh, be deliberate in our actions here. First item uh, for the board is an approval of a contract for janitorial services. Our contract for janitor janitorial services at the Rensselaer Rail Station is about to expire, and an invitation for bids was issued. Five bids were received. Staff recommends a contract to the low bidder Complete Building Solutions. They are the incumbent, and staff is satisfied with their work. We have a motion to award a three-year contract with two optional renewal years to Complete Building Solutions, Inc. of Gilderland for an amount not to exceed $529,500. So we get a motion on the first resolution? Motion. Dan, thank you. Second, Jackie? Any discussions about uh, this action? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion's approved. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, resolution number 48 is for the approval of a contract to lease bus tires. Our contract for leasing bus tires is about to expire and an invitation for bids was issued. We received a single bid and staff recommends a contract to Bridgestone, our vendor and incumbent for over 50 years. We need a motion to award a five-year contract to Bridgestone Firestone of Nashville, Tennessee for a minimum value of $2.5 million. Can we get a motion on uh, Resolution 48? So moved. Thank you, Jackie. Second? Second. Second. Thank you, Mike. Any discussion about leasing tires? So for those of you that weren't at the meeting, this is one of our Christmas gifts to you. Um, to one of the members, it's a cocktail party uh, quiz question when someone says, you know, how many tires do you buy? Or you can say, we don't buy tires. <laughs> we get a shocking look. We lease tires. And we've leased them from Bridgestone for 50 years. No, 60 years. No, 70 years. A long time. <laughs> <laughs> There's times during this meeting where I hold my breath and someone starts talking. Cocktail. <laughs> 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 Comments? If not, then all those in favor of uh, the contract with Bridgestone say aye. 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 Any opposed? The resolution is approved. All right, thank you. Resolution number 49 approve a contract for snow removal services. Our contract for snow removal at park and ride locations is expiring, and an invitation for bids was issued. Two bids were received, and staff recommends a contract for the low bidder, CityMark Striping, which is a New York State WBE firm. They are the incumbent, and staff is satisfied with their work. We need a motion to award a three-year contract with two optional years to CityMark Striping of Albany for an estimated amount of $430,000. We got a motion on this. Peter, thank you. 
Second? Georgie, thank you. Any uh, questions or comments? How many facilities in total are covered by this? Seven. Seven? Yes. Four, our four are owned and operated park and rides, uh, are two staging areas, and one turnaround layover at the end of the River BRT. And then, wasn't the last meeting we did a contract for the Rensselaer Rail right. Station? Correct. Okay. And this incumbent is also um, the one that does snow removal and ice removal at some of our uh, stations as well, shelter stations. Okay. Lots of contracts. Yeah. Well, it's good to have continuity and support the three stages you need for the Anything else? One other thing. I just was looking at page 21 and the, and the, uh, the base base. And, uh, there's a heck of a discrepancy <laughs> uh, there between. Yeah, we got into this a little bit at the committee meeting. Why do you stay? Um, basically, the... The other bidder is not local. Um, the startup cost for them would be quite oh, significant. Okay. Sometimes not local firms like to throw a dart at it and see if they hit. Okay, then. All those in favor of uh, resolution 49 for the soap, snow removal services contract say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, the resolution's approved. Thank you. Uh, resolution number 50 approve a contract for a truck purchase. As part of our fleet replacement plan, we need to replace a maintenance truck. We normally purchase support vehicles through OGS, but because of supply chain issues, we had, to source, we had to source this vehicle from local auto dealers. Staff recommends a contract to Metro Ford for an F-550 truck, including a salter and plow package. We need a motion to award a contract to Metro Ford of Schenectady for an amount not to exceed $96,360. We get a motion on this resolution. All right. Thank you, Jack. Second? Second. Dan, yeah, thank you. Any uh, comments, questions? Just a truck. Yeah, just a quick note. This usually wouldn't come to the board, but um, and some of you in, in government probably are experiencing this. The OGS state contract used to be the go-to source for trucks, service vehicles, and a lot of other things. No longer the case for a lot of reasons, but um, we couldn't find it, um, or sometimes we've, we've been able to find things and then get orders canceled. And, you know, Stacy gave a real good description of this, this activity at, at the board meeting, or at the committee meeting, excuse me. But more often than not now, we're sort of looking for this on our own, and frankly, very confident that we've gotten a you know, good price here. But uh, it's the supply chain issue, which is getting a little bit, you know, old. I think, that, you know, we're going to come up with a better excuse, but... Hopefully, board action. Now we've got to get the vehicle. Uh, but it's, it's right up the street at Metro, so uh, yeah, Metro. Yeah, so it should be a little easier. Right. Was this purchase anticipated? Oh yeah, oh. planned purchase. We normally would have just purchased off state contract. Wouldn't have even appeared before the board, but uh, yeah. we couldn't get it. Any other questions, comments? <coughs> All those in favor of the resolution say aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution is approved. Thank you. Resolution number 51, approve a contract to purchase bus filters. Our contract for bus filters is about to expire, and an invitation for bids was issued. Six bids were received, and staff recommends a contract to the low bidder vehicle maintenance program. They are the incumbent, and staff is satisfied with their work. We need a motion to award a two-year contract to Vehicle Maintenance Program with Local Hotel in Florida for an estimated cost of $339,170. Uh, uh, can I get a motion on resolution? I don't want. Second? Is there a question? Any questions, comments? Another cocktail party? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know some of you look down on that, but we don't have filters. We can't run buses. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Or comments? 
it mean on the bid summary that these companies will be awarded a portion of the contract? Well, this is divvied up. Sure. <clears throat> so these are awarded on a line by line basis so that we're not paying more than we need to for filters. So actually, BMP will get a good bulk of the contract, but there's three other firms that are getting a much smaller portion that didn't need to come to the board. They're getting maybe a half dozen to a dozen individual filter line items each. But there's probably, I don't know, 75, 80 filters that we purchase. So it, it's just more cost effective for us, and some of them don't offer all the filters also. Anything else? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Resolution is approved. <clears throat> Thank you. Resolution number 52, approve a contract for commuter service operations. Our contract for commuter services is expiring and an RFP was issued. This includes our this service includes our NX service from Saratoga County to Albany, as well as our new Thruway Express service from Amsterdam to Albany. Staff contacted several transportation providers to encourage participation, but most providers were concerned about the labor pool and did not propose. A single proposal was, was received from Upstate Transit, which is also known as Brown and Coach. Uh, which is our current provider. Staff recommends Upstate and is satisfied with their work. We need a motion to award a three-year contract with two optional years to Upstate Transit of Saratoga for an amount not to exceed $11,042,000. Let's make it a motion on this resolution. So moved. Thank you, Mike. Second. Second. Thank you, David. Questions, comments? Uh, you know, long discussion on this. Uh, I think you're familiar with the expressway services that, that we operate in the different looking vehicles. Uh, if you come down the Northway regularly, you'll see the NX vehicles. Um, and we now have one coming on, on the throughway. Uh, um, the Browns have been with us for years, a uh, great partner. Um, we were a little surprised by the, the lack of competition, but you know, when you really get into it, the reason lack of competition is the same issues we have. People don't know if they can guarantee the number of operators. Those are our vehicles. We own the vehicles. They provide uh, the operators to uh, operate the service. So on the budget line, when you see purchase transportation, that's a, a large part. Of, well, that's a smaller part of the purchase transportation line. The bigger part is, is our paratransit help sources. But uh, that's what that, that is. Um, lucky that we got the one proposal, uh, thankfully, because uh, the Browns are going through a whole lot of uh, changes, too. The two brothers are, are getting older. Uh, they're selling, all part, selling off parts of the company, so we're happy to have the proposal. And they've done quality work for us. How long has the Northway service been available? Gosh, um, it was originally, when I first came here, it was being operated by the county uh, on a contract basis, and then the county asked us to take it over for you. Come with the mid 80s, but it's been operational for, for many years. Uh, right now, we're probably operating about 60 70 percent of what we were operating, uh, maybe not even that much uh, before the pandemic. That's been a slow return of ridership, coming back nicely, but it's not, not as healthy as the rest of the system. And it's predominantly because 90 percent of those um, customers are state employees state employees are still not back to work full-time uh, on site in downtown. And we have no indication if, if or when that will change. The governor hasn't tip, tipped her hand on that at all, unless you've heard something. I mean, we've heard nothing. <coughs> we've already been updated. Yeah. You can check out. You have yeah. on the recruitment side, that's the retention side. Yeah. So yep. built in to be expected. <laughs> Is this contract a fixed fee for the year, or is it based on what the price? It's fixed service. More, I would call it more fixed fee. It's not based on miles. It's an hourly rate. Okay. Per hour. Okay. Per hour. And, um, so it also provides service for the throughway. Yep. That's great. From Amsterdam to Albany. Yep. That's the one. Nice. And their annual contract currently is about what? No. Top of your head. 
Well, it's definitely less than this. Um, one of the things uh, that's different about this is the addition of um, the throughway service. That's actually new, right? Because we just started that, so now it's an integral part of this contract. And the other piece is the fact they're being paid to drive those buses from garage door to garage door, not just revenue service. In a prior contract, they were only being paid for revenue service. But the incremental cost is probably about six or seven bucks an hour from the last contract on a per hour basis. That, that's basically the increase. Anything else was it, is as a result of us adding services to the scope, if that answers your Else? I'll call the question. All those in favor of resolution 52 say aye. 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 Any opposed? Approved. Thank you. Resolution number 53 approval of a contract for renovations at 85 Water Bullion Avenue. To accommodate refurbished office space at 85 Water Bullion Avenue, an invitation for bids was issued for renovations. Four bids were received, and staff <laughs> recommends a contract to the low bidder AOW Construction. The, bid, the vendor has satisfactorily performed other work for us in the past. We need a motion for a contract to AOW Construction of Albany for an amount not to exceed $294,600. So moved. Thank you, George. Second? Second. Thank you, Dan. Any questions about this? Uh, just a quick explanation. This is the last piece, well, I hope it's the last piece, of the sort of shuffling we've been doing here. We started with, you know, reconstruction of the area right below us. Gosh. Pandemic four years ago, and then we moved, moved upstairs. We renovated here. Uh, um, we also renovated the rail station, as you recall, or refurbished the rail station took over the space that we used to occupy. Our call centers are, are there now. We moved the call centers from 85, uh, Waterloo Avenue, to, to the rail station. And now we're going to renovate the 85 space, hopefully to free up more office space, to provide some meeting. Right now, this is the only meeting room um, here at 110. But between the two buildings, we hope to free up some space and get people out of closets. We don't have people working in closets now. So. That's the last piece, I think, the last piece of the puzzle. Staff might throw something at me, so I'm not sure to say I think. So is it another good idea? Another they're, they're always one step ahead of me. It's not hard. Anything else on this? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution's approved. Thank you. Resolution number 54, approve a contract for bike services. Our contract for bike share services has expired and an RFP was issued for operations and management of the bike fleet as well as acquisition of new technologies. A single proposal was received from Drop Mobility and Shared Mobility Inc. These services are unique, which makes finding vendors difficult. Staff is satisfied with the proposer's performance, references, and ability to provide the service. Need a motion to award a three-year contract with two optional renewal years to Drop Mobility of San Francisco, California, and Shared Mobility of Buffalo, New York, for an amount <coughs> to exceed $2.5 million. Is there a motion on this? Second. Second. Thank you. Second by Dave. I'm going to give you the short explanation here. John and Lindsay can answer any detailed questions, but you may or may not know that we operate, the, we, we manage the bike share program, but we don't do the day-to-day -day operations, although Lindsay uh, Brent oversees most of it. Um, she, she, she does a great job, a tremendous job. But um, all the people that you see who pick up the bus, you ask all the time, how do these bikes get back when we have, a, we have crews that go out? And, and all this management is behind the scenes, and we purchased that five years ago. The company that we purchased it from is, um, is a shell of its former self and really no longer can provide the services evidenced by the fact that they did not propose. So that's what this new company will do. In addition, uh, they will convert the brains of the bikes, the existing bikes, from old to new. 
and they will introduce e-bikes uh, for us starting next year. Uh, we'll have at least 100, 150 e-bikes with more to follow. Um, John and Lindsay tell me that you know, that's where the industry is going. Um, soon we will probably see all e-bikes. Uh, I thought e-bikes were, you know, only when you, you know, needed them. They said no, people want them all the time. Press the e-bike button. So that's what this is, John. Did I miss anything? That you You've got the biggest parts. <coughs> um, e-bikes just function as a normal pedal bike, but when you're in need of a hill, those kinds of things, that's why that's your position over. But in general, you nailed it, both the former company and the, we're working with two companies. One's a bike provider and a software provider. The other one will actually do the picking and moving of the bikes, as Carmen described, with the concept that we're very extremely hopeful of keeping our current team in place as well. You're talking good. <laughs> I think Lindsay talked about explain it like four times. Um, so two things. One is thank you for that because I know there was more than only one company did on it. There was excitement about the new company coming in. So that's, that's terrific. In terms of the whole thing of, of allocation of e-bikes, right, and absolutely everyone's on e-bikes and all that, and what I have heard working right downtown always was I'm never going to take a bike from people who had to go up the hill, right? Are we allocating them based on um, just the, the fad or the, the, the trend, or are we allocating or are there thoughts of allocating them based on the terrain or both? Well, for the most part, there's, there's two things you'll get from electric bikes in that regard, Peter. One is that, yes, the operations staff and Lindsay and her team will look to put bikes at those types of locations where people may not have gone up the hill. Think about Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute right. as well, another partner who doesn't go up the hill. <clears throat> Additionally, electric bikes in general get rented more often and return more revenue. So the combination of strategically deploying them in the right location along with higher usage and higher revenue are a couple of things we're excited. In terms of the pricing, how does that match up with the prior contract, or is that an apples and oranges? So the biggest difference is that we purchased the assets originally from Social Bicycles. We are going to look to move to a lease model. Um, part of the reason that we're using this unique setup is because we own 500 vehicles mm -hmm. and associated infrastructure. So you may have seen pictures three or four years ago of, of bike graveyards in Texas and other locations. We don't want to be part of that. We want to continue to utilize our assets. So part of the brain that Carmen talked about is switching over to the new bikes. Um, operationally, the dollars and cents are less than we've been paying previously, uh, but it's also a new outfit. So we need to see what the difference is that I kind of just described with Peter about electric bikes. The frequency of use and the constant moving of them may change the way they need to work a little bit, but on the paper, dollars and cents, we're paying less tomorrow than we are today for operation. Or you inspire to lease based on the entire contract? <laughs> <laughs> I would like to. Uh, uh, I think for the purposes of the meeting, yes. But another another cocktail party. <laughs> <laughs> At some point after five years, the bikes bring return to the Michigan County. Um, you'll wind up stripping them parts after six or seven years. So why not lease? No financing, no additional cost to us from our provider. You lease for three years, 30, 36 months, you start to turn the fleet over a little bit more quickly than you have. And I assume we've evaluated doing these services in-house through your management team, and I assume the order of magnitude of cost difference is significant. Enough to yeah, you're kind of where I was. We had a lot of internal debate about it because, as Carm said, Lindsay's the ACES, the team is ACES. Going through this change, at this time, I think we wanted to get some experience with somebody who's doing this in western New York. They operate the system in Buffalo and Niagara Falls and a couple other places. I do think we'll continue to investigate long term whether or not it makes sense for CBTA to bring that in-house, which will also involve Jack and his team getting insurance and the other pieces that are a little bit more wonky that maybe we don't want to rush right into. So, you know, put a cap on this thing. We are very unique. Um, there are no one in New York State doing this, and there's very few transit systems around the country who's, who are managing their own bike shop. So to bring you back seven years, you all took a chance. Because I was, I said, hey, let's take a chance. We believe that you can staff uh, the ability to do this. But what we're doing is we're marrying all the mobility choices under our umbrella, and I think that's why this has been so successful. And that's what is helping us, I think, generate ridership on the transit side as well. And that's what led us to take a chance with Drive, you know, our own car share program, which I think three years from now will be, will be 
singing the same praises. I'm really confident. Um, but I think it's, again, the board's willingness to take a bit of a risk here. Now we've gotten this down to the point where so long as we have this operational piece in place, I think the sky's the limit for bikes. Um, and, you know, Lindsay and, and, and her team are, are always coming up with new ways, but the, the real indication for that you know, success is how all of a sudden it's finding its way into all the universal access vehicles. Because people want it. You know, and it's now a cell tool. Um, for example, we have been talking to, we've been talking for, at length with Regenera. Like we really want them as a corporate partner, but honestly, they're just not interested. You know, they have plenty of parking. Uh, they, they don't view, I think, transit ridership as necessarily their market. But all of a sudden, when you start talking bikes, well, maybe we could put bikes on the campus. And so we don't, at this point, we don't really care which one, one of our mobility choices you select. Select one. Once we're in, we can work you a little bit. So uh, and John and Lindsay are great at that. Um, the fact that bikes are now finding their way into all these universal access vehicles is an indicator to me at least that I think we found something that really, really works. And remember, um, thanks to you know, our corporate partner, who pays us a good deal of money for those naming rights, we do quite nicely. Are they on the scooters? Is that a type of hurting? Not to uh, we'll bring up a bit. So. Aside, because John <coughs> quickly mentioned Jack Rogan and you know risk and risk management. Uh, you know, we were on our own uh, to ensure those, um, and it was it was not a, a, a ride that we, we were willing to, to get on. However, the bright light might be in this company. They may be willing. To, to manage and assume some of that responsibility. You know, film at 11 on that, we haven't given up. We haven't given up on scooters. Uh, it, I mean, we still get calls. Lindsay's <laughs> favorite call with that. Social media people want, I mean, Saratoga, for example, where, you know, frankly, city government wasn't all that receptive, but that community, people who live there, I mean, you know, there's a Brazil kid up there who spread the word, too, but. Um, they all want, they want scooters in the worst way. Um, I think if we can figure a way to deliver that, that in that community, I mean, just envision, you know, Georgie going back and forth. <laughs> 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 well, there are a lot of people who want it. Um, so I think we found the, you know, the, the right, the right people. And John, John did yeoman's work to find it. <coughs> Lindsay and I spent 12 to 15 months looking at the options just to, to really drive it home. There are probably three or four providers we could have even spoken to, and keeping our assets and integrating new assets really eliminated the majority of them. I guess to the outside world, right, to the consultant, <coughs> our mix is a little awkward. So we're asking them to work with what we have because it works here. We're not interested in you bringing your own stuff here and calling it a line or whatever. It's CDPHP cycle. All right, very interesting. Uh, I guess we'll call the question on the contract for bike services. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's approved. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to the final resolution, number 55, approve the safety management system plan. Uh, the Federal Transit Administration requires transit agencies to annually adopt the board approved safety management system plan. The safety plan enhances our efforts by providing a plan to identify and address safety concerns and challenges. This year, Congress passed the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which included elements to improve the safety plan. It requires agencies to have a joint labor management <coughs> organizational safety committee. The plan was included in your packets. Uh, we need a motion to approve the safety management system plan as required by the Federal Transit Administration. I guess second. Peter, second. Thank you. Questions? Got to do it. So I guess we'll vote on it. We want money. We do. <laughs> we do. Yeah, but it's also good. I mean, we should be doing things like this. Uh, you know, sometimes these federal regulations are, you could say, violent. This, this is the way.
And thank you to the ATU who has fully embraced it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's approved. Thank hey, you. Finish up your marathon report now. Almost there. You're a pro. Investment committee. The committee met on December 6th and will provide the year-end report to the board during the first week in January. Uh, on a bright note, I think it was mentioned that interest rates on our investments are trending upward, so that uh, that's a good that's a good thing for our investments. So. Um, monthly management report. Mike Collins gave the monthly management report. <coughs> Mortgage recording tax slowed a bit this month, but continues to be 30% over budget for the year. Custom repairs are 22% over budget, and Rensselaer Rail Street Rail Station is 39% over budget. And those are over budgets in, in good good terms, not, not bad terms. Wages were just over budget for the month due to a couple of holidays, but are 4.5% under budget for the year. And generally, we are in uh, overall we are in good financial position. Monthly non-financial performance report. Chris Desney provided the non-financial report. Fixed route ridership continues to grow and is up 17% for the month and 19% for the year. Star ridership is up 10% for the month and 14% for the year. Fixed route on-time performance was 69%. Star on-time performance was 71%. These <coughs> trips continue to be high due to headcount issues. There were 16 preventable accidents and 20 non-preventable accidents. Our absenteeism report shows that 10.5% of work days are not worked. Next meeting of the committee is scheduled for January 18, 2023 at 110 Waterfleet Ave and on Microsoft Teams. And that concludes the report. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Uh, now we have the committee stakeholder relations <laughs> committee report. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate it. Community and Stakeholder Relations Committee met on uh, Thursday, December 15th at 11.15 in person at Microsoft Teams. Staff provided updates on advocacy and a monthly communications and community engagement report. On advocacy, Carm Brazil discussed the start of advocacy season and the development of messaging at the state and local levels. Jamie Caslow summarized the Media Relations Community Engagement Report. CDTA earned 25 media placements in television, newspaper, and radio throughout the last two months. Stories focused on the public announcement with Senator Kirsten Gillibrand and the Biden Administration Infrastructure Coordinator Mitch Landau on the federal investment made to CDTA CDPHP cycle expanding to Amsterdam and CDTA partnering with the Blake Annex to offer free rides to those who work there. Some of our community engagement activities have included coats for kids in Amsterdam, food pantries of the capital region, stuff a bus, Schenectady Parade, and the Troy Low Art <coughs> Looking ahead, we are planning Transit Awareness Month activities for February, the annual State of CBTA event in March, and Transit Worker Appreciation Day on March 18th. And that concludes the report. Um, I don't think anybody has any questions. If they, you know, the next meeting is uh, Thursday, January 19th, 2023, at 11.15 at 110, and by Microsoft Teams. Okay. Pat, anybody have any questions for Pat? Yep, then we'll move on to the Strategic and Operational Planning Committee report by Mike Purcell. Jamie, thank you. Um, Strategic and Operational Planning Committee met last Thursday, uh, December 15th, 12 p.m. Here at 110 Water Valida will be at Microsoft Teams. Uh, there were no administrative discussion items. However, we do have a uh, consent agenda item for the board today, and that's uh, the preliminary budget approval for fiscal year 2024. We are required by New York State to approve a preliminary operating budget by December 31st. Staff uses it as a starting point, and we will have several more meetings to work toward developing a final adopted budget. The preliminary budget and five-year capital plan for fiscal year 2024 were provided. 
the preliminary budget is projected to be $120.3 million, a 10.4% increase from this year's budget. We are projecting a $3 million increase in customer revenue and rail station revenue lines. No changes in federal assistance, and to balance the budget, we are adding an additional $9 million in STELA. We are projecting a higher than normal increase in wages and benefits since uh, this is a contract year. And a $1.8 million increase in health insurance. Fuel is projected to increase by $3.6 million. The five-year capital plan was also reviewed, year one of which includes accommodations for the fleet, shelter program, and normal replacement efforts. It also includes the loan no grant we received. Staff is re recommending that the fiscal year 2024 preliminary operating budget of $128,321,806 and a five-year capital plan of $302,104,000 be approved to meet our New York State statutory requirements. Can we get a motion on the preliminary budget? Jackie, thank you. Second, Peter. Big number. <coughs> so uh, the plug number or the the play is nine million dollars. So in state operating assistance with plugging in the delta nine million dollars and saying, I guess our message is, hey, state legislators, that's what we need. Um, you know, will that happen? You know, not likely. So we will then, over the next two or three months, come up with a couple ways to, to plug that. You know, most likely, you know, we'll use the available um, uh, coping rate plugging. But there's a lot of things still left to be resolved. A lot of those lines have a lot of uh, discussion, I would say, left. One line, though, that is a little frightening, it's, you know, we're all on the budget, not a huge number, but fuel. Um, we may have to absorb that and more uh, in a few years. It might, might be more. We don't know. Um, we're in close contact with uh, our supplier. Um, we usually are out three years, but we're not. We're, our contract with our fuel supplier expires in June. We'll have something. Place, even if it's a six month contract. No idea when this is coming. Uh, every time we think things are getting a little bit better, uh, something happens. Literally, anything that happens around the world just puts the future prices into total disarray. So, as a reminder, we're at 177. $1.77 gallons. We're, you know, we're not going to be anywhere near that. So, maybe a short term. So the purpose of today's action is to file the budget with yeah, the we have to budget file, office. Put it into Paris for those of you that are, you know, no, no state. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I used to know who looked at this stuff. I don't know if anyone looks at this stuff. <clears throat> Which, you know, that's fine. You know, it's a good start to the budget. Yep. It's, it's as draft as draft can be. Good. Any, any questions on the budget? Seeing none. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution is approved. And one final note is the next meeting of the committee will be January 19th, 2023. Here at 110 Waterloo Dam, 12 p.m. or via Microsoft Teams. And that concludes our right. report, Mike. Right. Yep. Roll into your report, Tom. Yeah, well, I think Dave's. Dave report covered half a mile, which is great. In some ways, that's the way this is supposed to work. Is and several of you recall from our days of developing this governance model. Um, the committee reports are supposed to carry the day. And I think they do. They, they're really meaningful committees that you know, work out the details of all the various things that we want to accomplish. For me, I think the most noteworthy thing is the recovery of the system, you know, both in terms of Looks at the fare box, to, you know, um, route deployment, <coughs> bike, bike rides. You know, we 
crash the 80,000 ridership mark um, on the last day. I don't know if Lindsay had something to do with that. She had well, some of her minions riding bikes to count them. It doesn't matter. We were over 80,000. Every year we get a higher number. So hats off to the people who do that work. Uh, budget and advocacy season is in full swing. Um, Lisa Morello was here at the December meeting, and she and I become you know partners uh, for the next three months. And basically, any meeting she tells me to be at, I'm at. Stocking your uh, packets. Uh, what is our beat behind? What we try to do is just summarize you know what we're doing. Um, as usual, you may get tired of me saying this, I, but I'll never get tired of it. Um, our message is totally different than everybody else's. <coughs> we don't focus on, you know, what the problems are. We focus on what the opportunities are. Uh, in my mind, that's a huge difference. Uh, and it's really, I think, positioned us differently at the Capitol. Um, I don't know. People are generally, I think, for the most part, happy to see us. Um, you know, they're not, oh, God, what do they want now? Uh, it's more, you know, here's what we're doing. Here's why we need your help. So we can do more of it. And that's really what this is all about, is do more of it, is provide more connections with you. So all good news on that uh, front. Employee engagement retention, um, no change, maybe a little bit, maybe a glimmer of hope. Uh, retention seems to be a little bit better. Um, it, it's probably the hardest thing I've seen in my career. Um, it's just, once you think you know the answer to something, why people leave, you get hit with something else. So, no different than anybody else here um, in your, your companies and your business, but we keep fighting the fight. Uh, Montgomery County doing really well. About 20,000 rides, give or take a month. I think like that's what it's averaging, with a lot of room to grow. Um, our discussions in Warren County seem to be getting realer. That's a word. Um, the next step is. <laughs> Mike and I actually went up and met with a couple of their staff people uh, to sort of talk to them in real terms about what it would mean. It, it went well. Uh, you know, they're a little leery. Of, you know, it almost felt like we were these city slippers. Um, it, it really felt that way. Um, but um, I think it's going to happen. It'll, it'll probably get to the county board of supervisors late winter, um, I would guess. And every indication is that they'll vote favorably. So you know, when we assume the operation, you know, that to be determined, lots of little issues to, to work out. But it's, it's a nice little system. It's well managed, it's well done. But it's it's different. Than, everything is different than what we do. And I can see where they could be fearful of city slippers. And even when we started talking about technology, which they all want, all the, it's really what they want, all our technology. Boxes, overhead signs, and real time information. Although they wanted it, but I could see them. You're going to have to change what? We're going to have to do what? They didn't want to change anything. So it is what it is. I, 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 think, I think it's going well. Um, just a special note of thanks, and on behalf of everyone here, to our transportation and maintenance people who are juggling work every single day. Um, if you could just experience what happens in our control center and our dispatch offices every morning when, you know, like, I think it was Tuesday, eight people and then all the few others in Schenectady and Troy didn't show up. They're already shorthanded. They're already, we're down 10% uh, in general. So they, they know they're down 10%, but then 10 people call out. They're magicians. <laughs> They're literally magicians because they take the system, they, they tear it apart and rebuild it so that the customer, for the most part, notices nothing. Uh, so every day, you know, people who do this work tear the system down and rebuild it, give them what they have in front of them. I mean, it's just outstanding work. I mean, they are literally magicians. And, you know, Chris and I were talking about this yesterday. The ones that are good at it, they're, they're, it's like watching art. And then you, every now and then we see somebody bad at it, and, and it's like, oh my God, get that poor person out of here. Because it, it, it just doesn't work. 
the ones who do it well, they're, they're, they're keeping the place, they're keeping the place moving. So I'm, I'm just very thankful for what they do. Another CDTA uh, employee story, uh, close to my heart because I spent a lot of years on the United Way board. Please do welcome the end to this first meeting. And I've chaired the board. Somehow I, I, they twisted my arm into another year. Um, but I do it for this reason. CTA employees believe in it. We closed this year at $137,000. Uh, our employees giving came in $137,000. We are the large. We are the largest per capita givers in the capital region. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. Um, you know, some of our people uh, are giving to programs that their families are using. And so that's what really makes it, it makes it just wonderful to see. But $137,000, this is in, in a time when giving uh, to the United Way and other charities is down and down significant. Our United Way per capita raises less than any other United Way upstate. And that's what we've been trying to change. You know, to get out, out raised by people that just trolls. Or Buffalo, uh, but it's great to see what our employees do. And then, lastly, um, you know, everybody reflects at the end of the year. And, you know, I'm not going to get into the sob stories about you know what I reflect on because it's you know one program. But um, you know, we've been doing this here at CDT for 41 years, so this is when I get like extremely you know, sentimental and thankful to everything, I, every opportunity I've been given, uh, and that I've been given. Just thinking about all the people that helped me along the way and how many times they had to explain things to me. It doesn't come naturally. You know, sitting with John Scherzer to understand the bike, the bike share transition. I don't know how many times I told him, stop, John. I'm just not getting it. You know, but finally, he, he, after 10 times, he understood it. But that's been happening to me for 40 years. And I was just thankful to everybody for you know, what you've done to make this place so great. So happy holidays on behalf of all of us. Connor. Any uh, comments from the board before we close out the meeting? If not, then our next meeting will be on January 25th. It's a Wednesday, 12 noon, right here at 110 Water Believe Avenue. Everyone have a great holiday upcoming and enjoy yourself. you got a lot of small talk to to make it to the next party, I guess. <laughs> 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 Get something out of these meetings. I'll take a motion to adjourn. So, thank you, Dan. Second. Peter, thank you. Everyone. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy your holiday. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you too.